guys, how's it going? I'm Justin Davis from Drone Camps RC. Check out what Fox Tech sent me today. I got the Lightning 210 here on the bench and I wanted to just give you a quick overview and some of my opinion on this frame. The way they had it set up versus the way I would like to have it set up and the way I know that most of you would probably like to set it up. Uh, if you're going to do it with a Tyrannus, this is how I did it. I did it with the PPM receiver. Um, a D4R2 and I set that up by putting a little jumper on the end of the, the D4R2 and then I just used a single cable here. Um, if you have seen this before in some of the other reviews you did see that it comes with this larger kind of cable that sticks out the side. The pins do stick out the side right here so I'm going to lift this up and show you guys that. Uh, very sharp. I did stick my finger with it uh, a few times just handling it. So what I might do is just bend these down or I might even go in there and take a soldering iron and heat them up and just pull them off one by one until I get to these last three. I'll leave those on there for PPM uh, because all we need PPM is actually the signal, the ground, and the positive wire on there to get a, a proper signal for PPM and that, that way we don't have to use all of these cables. So um, this is really nice. This 210 frame size is really relevant right now in the racing community. The nice thing about a 210 if you're just getting into this is that 210s they corner really well and they accelerate really, really nice with these 2205 motors on it. You got 2300 kV um, sets so revolutions and that's uh, revolutions per volt. Very, very, very fast motors on here. 20 amp ESCs so you can handle 3 to 4S. If you're a new guy, fly 3S on it. If you're well versed and, and you want maximum power in your races because you're going to do short bursts, uh, do 4S and 4S will work just fine on here. The frame does look decently durable. I believe it is three mil bottom plate. It looks pretty heavy duty on the bottom plate. I've seen a lot of frames coming out with this solid bottom plate like this uh, H design here. And then the, the side frames look decently durable. I think they're one and a half mil there. They do have a 600 milliwatt transmitter on this, which is way more than we need for racing and close proximity racing with your friends and tight fields because mainly because 600 milliwatts going to drown out your friends if they're on 25 or 200 milliwatt you're going to just take them out right away if they're in the air you might even actually run over top of their video so don't plug this in around your friends if there's a race going on um, before you show up at a race or you go to another field it's totally easy just to pop this off you can take this unplug this right here and put yourself a new video transmitter on there. I, I would suggest a 25 milliwatt if you're gonna be racing. If you're by yourself and you're not flying with a bunch of people around town, then just stick with the 600. Um, if you want to, you can actually put a 200 on there and then you can just change channels, get with the race coordinator and make sure you're on a separate channel than everybody else when you do go to race. Uh, but 600 is gonna be a little much for racing in close proximity. Um, does have a NAS32 board in here. Uh, with the latest, it's the re revision six on here. And like I said, you can go in there and desolder those pins if you want to, or just leave them there. Um, I think that will be fine, except for the exception of sticking myself. And this, this might actually be in a bad spot. Um, I would suggest maybe taking a little, maybe a little piece of hot glue and just putting it right along here so that it holds this in place. A lot of vibrations are in this copter when you're flying it. so. Um, and later on I might, like I said, I might take these pins off and, and direct solder it to the board. I got my D4R2 in the back here and it's riding on the bottom of the frame. I'm going to bring the antennas out the bottom because I like the antennas coming out the bottom now because I've crashed so much going in like this direction and when you have the antennas sticking out the top, they tend to bend back and hit the props. These 5045 props cover a lot of space back here. So when they come in, they're going to get chewed up by the props. If you have them sticking out the bottom, they're going to be on top when you go to land. So, or when you go to crash. So that's, that's going to be a lot better situation for your antennas. Um, the 20 amp ESCs are, are housed in casing and that's really nice too, because I've seen a few of these cases around and they look, look like they protect the ESCs quite well. So if you're new to this, nice feature on this, if you see this here, there's arrows on the motor to let you know which direction these spin. So when you go to grab a prop, if you break a prop and you need to put a new one on, you've got a little guide there, some icons there to tell you which prop goes on. And that leading edge will show you uh, which direction that spins as it, as it points up. This will be, be a counterclockwise 
rotation propeller. And it comes with a 4S 1500. Very, very nice. This 1500 gives you just a little more flight time. I like these. I'll usually grab these first before I fly my 1300s. Um, very, very nice that it, it does mount right on top of there. They gave us a handful of straps, which I'm going to be using on my other copters. Very excited about that because guess what? Guess what's different about these? They're actually coated in like a rubber coating. And this makes them way more durable than just a piece of flat Velcro with a strap on the end. Because this week I've broken several of these um, pieces on the end, these fasteners um, strap. And this is, uh, this is where they break, right here. And sometimes right in the middle too. But the 4S battery, especially a 1500, is quite heavy when you go in for a hard crash. Uh, pretty small frame pretty large battery so you can also run a 1300 on this if you want to lighten it up just a little bit 1500 is not totally necessary now the camera on here this is a sony 700 tvl this is a ccd camera this is not a cmos on here um, it says in the specs that it is ccd so i'm going to trust that and it already is angled has a nice angle in here so I won't really have to do much for the camera angle I think that's going to be totally fine um, but overall first impressions my first impressions the lightning 210 is awesome I do like the way they have this set up I like the way the VTX comes out the back and the antennas out the back that is not a problem with me um, and it does have a vertical mount on this VTX so that's nice that it comes straight out the back um, one thing that I did notice about this that I didn't see any other guys mention is that I don't see a beeper on here anywhere so that's something to take in consideration I would put a beeper on here if you're flying in places where there's tall grass or you're flying near marshes or anywhere there's a lot of vegetation you could probably lose this copter pretty quick if you don't have a beeper on it especially where I fly I usually fly in a big field with grass makes the crashes a lot less likely to damage things but you're also more likely to lose a copter I've I've lost them before so um, gonna try not to lose this one I'm gonna add a beeper on it uh, I'm gonna find a spot on that PDB somewhere and, and come up onto the board and, and try to get my beeper hooked up um, and I might follow up later I'm gonna follow up later with some flight footage uh, show you guys how awesome this is and I'll do the full review later but I just wanted to give you a first initial impression and overview of the the lightning 210 from Fox Tech because I think it is pretty awesome especially for new guys you don't want to do any building right out of the box you can rip uh, with these 2205s and 4s so a very good standard size copter in the FPV community right now. Go check them out on foxtechfpv.com. I'm Justin Davis. Thanks again for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.